So today I want to talk about the power and magic of words. And I'm going to kind of go maybe a lot of different places depending on what happens in the moment. But, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, we have to do that, you know, uh, um, pre-qualification on it all. But uh, anyway, you know, just the power and magic of words. Our, our words are already affirming what's happening inside. Our actions do too, mind you. But the consciousness is the most important thing. I just did a, a talk on Friday about boundaries, explaining to people. Because boundaries are not just, you know, learn to say no, and they're not just walls. Boundaries have to come from your consciousness. They're, it can't be just behavioral modifications. They have to be in, through and through. Like, I, I know what works for me and what doesn't work for me. That is a true boundary, as opposed to a defense. No, no, this is me. This works for me. This doesn't work for me. And it's real amazing. And it changes a little each moment, given on, you know, how I'm feeling, based on my consciousness, my sense of value, my sense of safety, for some of us, but, you know, my sense of self. And the same goes for the use of, of words. If people really know who they are, they won't betray themselves. You won't speak or act in a way that is contrary to the real you. The problem is, we forget who we are, then we have to hyper-defend to make up for not valuing ourselves, and then we go overboard, offensively and defensively, and then people are tense. You know, they're just reactive. The more we know who we are, it's an incredible thing to really, like, just be in such a center. I am that I am. So Moses, God, you know, who are you? Who do I tell the people? You, are? I am that I am. And Moses is going, that ain't going to go over. I mean, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, what are you, Lao Tzu? Give me, a, give me something that makes sense to people, you know. And God's like, okay, I'll try it again. I am that I am. Humans just don't get it. And we go, okay, well, there's, you know, analyze that and, and, and play with the wording and try to deal with the, the translations from this language to that. It means... Perfection is, love is, wholeness is. Now, exactly what do you mean by love? That's humans. God knows, humans guess. God is, humans juggle it all, trying to figure it out. So, it's, it's really got, you know, it's about getting to a place of, yeah, we, we modify our words here and there, that's fine. But it really comes back to a place of, who am I? Where are my words coming from? My human self? My working, developing, evolving soul? Or the I am that I am? Now, I feel like I do pretty good in my life with all this, but I'm not going to claim that I've got the I am all the time. I just make it my goal to try. That's all. When I slip, oops, I was just in the I am not. <laughs> you know? You'll find uh, one of the DVDs has a, a video, just a talk, just on I am versus I am not. The, ego, the, the divine I am and the ego I am not. And everybody's got those two. And when you're coming from defense, reaction, whatever else, it, it's the ego I am not. And it's amazing because if you see that, then it's kind of like, oops, I'm going to, first of all, I think I'm going to lower my voice, not sound so overly compensatory, you know, getting loud and, and pushing, and oops, and you kind of, you, you, you know, you just make some adapta adaptions, and, and you realize, yeah, that was not the divine I am. Not that, the, not that the divine I am can't be loud or firm, absolutely sometimes. You know, Jesus turning over the tables, the money changers' tables in the temple, people get confused by that. Oh, some, some people will say, well, he was... Um, justly, divinely angry, no such thing. Others will say, well, he must have slipped into his ego right then. No. It's just that humans don't know how to be loud and centered at the same time. It's kind of cool. Hey, <laughs> knock it off. And you're like, and I love you. But you don't say that. <laughs> but you don't say that. Because they might go, oh, then I can get away with it. No. Knock it off kind of cool. So Jesus is like, what, what is up with you people? What are you doing? 
This is a temple, sacred space. Knock it off. It could have been anything they were doing from ego and he could have still said it. And he needed to be firm. And he chose to be firm. Humans would record such a thing and the Lordeth was ticked offeth, you know, <laughs> because they don't know how to be that, so they project their stuff onto him. Now, now, if one of us were writing that today, it would be written differently. It would have been like, and he demonstrated clarity and firmness, yet love at the same time. He said this, and yet there was no tone of judgment or hatred for them. Yet he was educating them. That's enough. And it's like, and we heard it. At first, our egos reacted, and then we heard it like a loving parent that was meaning well for us. And that's how it would be recorded differently today. You know, so in ancient times, people understood the power of words. So it's kind of cool when you look back at these things and you realize, you know, one of the many things that, you know, advances or, or advantages of ancient cultures is they understood the power of words almost to an excessive superstitious level. I think it's cool though. I am. Be careful when you say I am. You know, the uh, Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not use, careful with this, thou shalt not use the Lord's name in vain. And I was brought up, you know, at whatever age, it meant don't cuss. Don't say damn with God's name in it. Because that's using the Lord's, you know, so we got to be careful. It's like you can say every other vulgarity, but not the Lord's name in vain. It's like, you know, wow, this is kind of weird, like a weird science of, of you know, uh, behavior and language and punishments and all. Not using the Lord's name in vain meant don't use it worthlessly. Don't, don't misuse, abuse the, na the name of God. Well, okay, which is God? You mean God and then a cuss word? No. I am. Don't waste the power of I am. Don't use it in vain. Vain would be, re if you're going from A Course in Miracles, for example, vain would be, it means not vanity, it means worthlessness, and vanity is worthless. But using God's name in vain, not to use it worthlessly, neglectfully. When you say I am and you put a negative to it, I am so mad at you, I am angry, I hate you, or whatever. This, this I, it's the divine I. But I slipped into the worthless ego I am not. So be careful. Because when you say I am, but you're coming from your ego, you've used God's name in vain. There's no punishment other than on yourself. Because when you came from the ego, it brings its own karmic responses. Because I, as soon as I am here, as soon as I am here, showing up, speaking, I, even before I am, I am, is powerful. But even the concept of I, here I am, I'm showing up, I am sad, I am angry, with or without am. I, it means here, now, a power shows up. When we say I, or I am, the whole universe that's just kind of this casual waves, you know, if you really get to the deep understanding, when you're in the ego I am not, or from the divine I am, the universe are just, it's waves. And it waits for somebody to show up. When you say I, they all get an attention, get prepared, everybody holds up. The whole universe says, hold it, incoming. And then you say, I am awake. Like Buddha said, the universe says, and so it is. Nice job. What can we do for you today? When you say, I am hating you, the universe still has to respond. But it's faking it. Because you didn't use divine consciousness, you came from ego. And ego is not actually a creative power, but it is a manipulative power. So the universe still has to say, well, don't send in the real forces. Send in the ones that disguise themselves as things that people believe in. And so the world still, the universe still appeases us. It still shows up in some form. But when you see things with your senses that the yogis forever have been warning you not to pay attention to, 
When you see things with your senses, you're seeing what the ego, I am not universe manifested for me. And when you come from the I am, there's a wave of love that is beyond senses that comes to bring you a new life. It still manifests as material things, might maybe a raise at work or whatever it happens to be. But people that try to change their life by only manifesting cool stuff, they're still based on the senses, which means they're still coming from the ego I am not, even though they call it cool, powerful, creative energy. You know, these things go viral, and all they are is viral ego. <laughs> they call it new thought, empowerment. What are you empowering? The ego I am, or the uh, God I am, or the ego I am not. Which one is it? You'll know if you're stubborn, you won't know until it manifests, and then you can use, you know, the, the, the obvious. If it's dense, if it's hate-oriented, fear-oriented, if it's about getting and getting and getting, if it's sense-oriented, it's probably coming from the ego I am not. But before you have to have things manifest to show you you've messed up, all you have to do is ask where it was coming from in the first place. But people don't have a relationship with themselves. They don't say, wait, wait a minute, pause, no and nip that in the bud. They wait until it blows up and then start wondering if they got that right. As we grow, people are more and more going to start being aware of what they're actually feeling before they called something into manifestation. So this whole concept, you know, uh, the whole universe, we started when God said, let there be light. It didn't say, I am. It knows I am. I am the light. So before you hear God speak, let there be light, it's already saying, I am the light. Then it says, and since I am the light, I'll create more light. Just like if I am fear, I'm going to create fearfully. God says, I am light. I am love. Therefore, let there be light. It means, and what I am, I want to see more right now. And we are. Now we create. We're created in God's image. So the very beginning of creation comes from a being, God, knowing what it is and then simply expanding from itself and making more of itself. That's how creation took place. Real creation. We're made in God's image and that's what we're supposed to do. Wait, wait, wow. I am. And then what is it I am? I, I, I am feeling alive today. Bring your aliveness. How does it look? I'm an artist, so it's coming through, and it starts becoming art. It comes through as a song. It, it can come through parents into creating children. It could. But people instead go, oops, and they have a child. That's, that, was your, that was your powerful word? Oops. Yeah, that would probably not be the God I am chant. You know, that's not exactly the, the God chant. Okay, um, that's the ego I am not. If any of us could think right now, if we were on the other side and we wanted to be birthed and we could choose to come through conscious parents that would say, it's time that our love expand into the form of, of a birthing of a part of our love called a child or one that unconscious parents that have no clue and then oops. I think anybody with consciousness would prefer that first one. I want somebody that wants me. I want somebody that, that, that it's an expansion of the love. That makes total sense. That's what we're supposed to be doing in this universe. Now, that makes sense, right? Can I hear an amen? amen? All right, great. Then why do we look on Monday like this going to work? What happened to the, my job is supposed to be a birth of myself. I feel so cool. I feel so great that a job should feel like this and a date and your house everything's supposed to be congruent you know instead of I feel so alive but everything else stinks why are you not birthing it into manifestation why aren't you not why are you not bringing the God I am to the world well I would but everybody else is so see and God can't look at that God can't say well I wanted to create a really wonderful universe, but humans came along and <laughs> ruined everything. I just, I, I have to go take some medication now because, you know, to cope with humans. Gotta go take my human, you know, meds. 
uh, you know, or take the divine 12 step from human, you know, group, support group. It's just God and himself, you know. Um, it doesn't even have any other members of the group because he's one. So, <laughs> so instead, if I'm made in God's image, what I wear should feel like me. The colors, the fabric, the feeling. My, my car is not something that I have. It too can be an extension of myself. And even if I don't have a lot of money yet, I'm going to hang a dang prism from the broken mirror of my broken car. You know, and if you're still riding a Schwinn instead of a car, hang a dang prism. Just bring some light. Just say, this is what I'm about. Wherever I go, God is. You know, to be able to say, where I am the light of the world. And wherever I go, I will bring the light of the world. And it could be in the most challenging cities or places it could be you could be military in a dugout you know like other guys you know just praying for survival and can you make a difference can you can you bring the light even to the most challenging places well if i weren't in such challenging places i probably could <laughs> the truth is wherever you are at that moment it's perfect i'm not saying you are fated to stay there because as you change the consciousness, you'll find there are new doors that open. But wherever you are in that moment you decided to wake up, bring the light there instead of wishing you were somewhere else. God does not wish it were anywhere else. It doesn't make any sense other to, than to disempowered beings wishing constantly. So we've got this, this idea, let there be light is God. And it has no doubt about that. Even though the Bible will tell you later, and God repented that he made man because man was a pain in the divine butt, you know, or whatever. <laughs> you know, it tells, but that is not written by God. That's man's interpretation going, I bet God repented that he made man. And they write that. God cannot. First of all, because God doesn't see us the way we see ourselves. It said, let there be light. And it goes, wow, cool, light beautiful and we're like we decided to become something else something less than light and God just waits for us to remember that we are only light and decide to become that thing that we always have been and so on from there the acts of forgiveness you know and awakening and so on and so on and growth but God never changed its opinion of us but when God said let there be light God's spoken words let there be light there, it doesn't have a mouth or vocal cords then how was it done? Consciousness. Could have been written, and God thought, let there be light. And that would even be more accurate. God thought the thought, let there be light. So we are thoughts of God. We are a divine thought of God. And we've just forgotten. And one way to remember who we are is start acting like it. And one way to act like it is, Start exercising your divine thoughts, which are also practiced in bodies with divine words. Creative, powerful words. Prayer, decrees, affirmations, those help. But it also helps to watch out for the opposite. Man, I'm never going to get out of this mess. Oh, this is too much for me. I'm not saying you should shame yourself. Don't, you know, be careful. I'm not the type that if I'm in the room with you and you say, I'm so depressed, <gasps> don't you say words, I'm not going to shame you for that. I'm going to just say, what's going on? I'm going to meet you at that level. Come on. But the whole time, I will be looking for little places that I can plant other thoughts. And if you're not wanting to hear any other thoughts, I'll be doing it in here. And since you and I are one, it'll be downloaded to you on some level anyway. So I'm going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> you know and it's not just me personally any of us when we hold presence we're not just like better than them when we hold presence we are the part of them that also wants to hold presence but it's not a part of them they're wanting to own completely yet so we're just representing what their higher self so you know you have um, words you can use powerful words I am 
You can invoke that presence. Things are kind of disrupted right now. I am going to, and there's people, I, I mean, for, since all through history, but there are people that, you, that I know that are 80 years old, 90 years old that know how to do this, and there's people that are young people that are getting it. And stuff can be going on, and you can have all kinds of really well-trained spiritual people. I, oh, I've studied everything, i read everything, and they're standing in all the negativity. And you'll have some 99-year-old old, you know, woman go, you know what, this is getting to be too much. I command the power of God right here and now. I bring in the I am presence and I deny the power any of this has over me or this room. And you start to go, whoa, that, that is somebody who says, despite the temptation to be asleep, I choose to be awake. And they represent us. And you should be saying, man, I want to be like them when they grow up. That, that's good to think that. Oh, wow, how do they do that? And when they do, you can feel it. It's, it's in the ethers. You can feel it. It's visceral, right? It's not like just words. It's like you get chills. And you should be feeling chills because something just quickened through the room and it's a vibration and it's a frequency and you're feeling it as a chill. But that's just your body's interpretation of, geez, Louise, what just happened? And it's really cool stuff. But now do you do that? You know, I don't think you should sit necessarily at the kitchen table, slam your hand down on the table, and the children are like, you know, <laughs> you know, they're, they're going to have to have counseling 20 years later because, you know, I invoke the power of the Lord, you know, and they're like, oh my God, I don't, I don't even want to believe in God now, you know, because I'm shaken. But, but to see someone who chooses to believe and remember who they are. Um... You have Buddhist chants. The words are just words, guys. It's consciousness that makes them powerful. You have Buddhist chants. You have, you know, in Hebrew, you have Aramaic, you have Arabic. Great. I personally say to you, use words you understand. I believe in the power. Sanskrit and all these different languages, Latin, whatever you want to use, fine. But it also helps for you to know what you said. If you say, oh, money, pod me, you know, whom, uh, great. <laughs> boom, shakalaka, boom, great. <laughs> but if you don't know what it means, I don't think it's going to help you as much as you stepping up using your language and your choice of words. But it's still affirmation. Now, there are words that are in other languages. They will carry a vibration. One reason, because consciousness has put power into it generation after generation. So it still works. But sometimes you're going to go, well, I used this one prayer and it didn't work as much as this other one, which was in, you know, Hindu. It's not always just the words having power that, that, that affected you, that worked for you. A lot of times you don't realize some of your own past lives in that language is being remembered cellularly. So when you use that other language, the other language is not special and better than other languages. It's your belief in it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, but uh, Buddhist chant, Latin chant, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, um, as long as you feel, this is right for me. They're, they're just words and they're part of the three-dimensional universe. But in the 3D universe, you still have some things that will seem to be more powerful than others. And I'll talk about that in just a sec. However, one of the most common we hear, and we actually think it's kind of fable, fairy tale, abracadabra. You know, abracadabra. In Hebrew, Arabic, Aramaic, the, it, a rough translation is, I create with my words. It's like, and so it is. Now, if people would realize, like in the old days, when you said such and such, people would be like, oh, and they would all like wait because they knew. You just spoke powerful words, whether it was naughty words or power empowering words. People in the old days, they understood it. Then it got taken for granted because everybody just kept descending into three-dimensional consciousness. And then you lose the magic, meaning you lose the belief in it and therefore everything, be, it all becomes kind of worthless. Abracadabra. Abracadabra starts Abba. What's Abba? Another name for God. 
So abracadabra is not just cool genie words. Abracadabra means by the power of God, I affirm this to be. So in the old days, you might have said such and such and abracadabra meaning open this doorway. You know, a genie story, right? Or, or Arabian Nights and things like that. Or to our own more common f flavor, it's and so it is. But when I teach people how to heal, I say uh, typically five stages of healing. The fifth one is gratitude. Why? Because abracadabra. And so it is. It's not just like, and so it is. Thanks. Peace out. <laughs> Aloha. It means now. I've already said it. It's done. I mean, it, it really do your best to feel it, to know it. This is absolutely happening. How could it not? Oh, because I said abracadabra. It's because I said. Not because of what I said. It's that I believe that by saying, and so it is, it's going to be. Well, how do you know? And is it that superstition? No. God is. I am. We are. And so it is. Abracadabra. Amen. Bam. It's in a different language. You say bam. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just mm. So the word even abracadabra comes from Abba. It's like, yes, okay. Then, then it also comes from, besides Abba, Abraxas. Spelled a couple of different ways, but Abraxas. Um, besides being a Carlos Santana album, uh, sec his second album, Abraxas. Uh, uh, it's true. Um, Abraxas is, is an ancient kind of a deity, magical word, god of some kind that you call upon, but it's really just the Holy Spirit. But there are variations of what this thing called Abraxas was. Abracadabra is the spoken, like there's Abba, God, up here. There's Abracadabra down here for me to affirm, to make things happen. But in between the two, there's somebody kind of making the Abba manifest through the Abracadabras of life. That thing, that bridge, is in, to some people's uh, uh, cultures, it, it was Abraxas. So Abraxas was thought to be like, let's say, like the Holy Spirit. It was thought to be like a God that is in charge of all the mysteries to kind of bring into manifestation, you know, magic. So you would call upon this being. Now, you know, there's Heroku and there's all kinds of other uh, uh, Tibetan Buddhism and Native American traditions and shamanism. They typically have a deity that they call upon to be the worker of the magic. And Abraxas is sort of one of those. Except for each of the letters of Abraxas, you have all kinds of interesting things, like the primary planets that astrologers honored at the time. Abraxas. So it was like, it was multi-leveled. You know, it, it, it symbolized the presence of God in the material world. It was, um, uh, I call it the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit's job is to bridge pure spirit into the material world. So this concept of Abraxas, um, even like I said, Carlos, you know, the band Santana, they did an album called Abraxas, and in the back of the album, he credits uh, a quote from Herman Hess. But he actually was quoting Herman Hess, but it was a book called Damien. And when he wrote the book, at first, he didn't credit himself Herman Hess. He actually used a different name. The last name was Sinclair. And there's, there's a website you could check out, ChristianStClairSinclair.com. She has an amazing article all about, you know, abracadabra and all that on that. But pretty cool. So there's this, he's crediting, you know, uh, um, Abraxas, and yet Abraxas is mentioned in this book, Damien, and Damien is the, written by a, a, you know, a pseudonym, which is like pseudoname, a pseudonym of Herman Hess, but it's this guy, last name Sinclair. Then it was eventually outed that it was actually Hess that wrote the book, but... Sinclair, and then this gal, you know, Christian Sinclair has this article about Abraxas and about Abracadabra and all. So, a, a bizarre little, like, connections. But at the end of the day, once upon a time, all these cultures, whether it was the witches and pagans using familiar spirits, 
they could speak it and make it into something. Uh, familiar spirits like cats. That's why the, 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 all the weird legends about witches and cats. Those were actually thought to be extensions of the witches or masters of sorts that would use parts of themselves and extend that out. And they would do so with, with you could say, incantations, but they're power words. But in, in Arabia, they would have what they were called harmonquists, which would be an entity that was an offspring of that magician. And in Hebrew, they had something called a golem. The golem. Which is kind of funny, because it's been used in stories since. Lord of the Rings, right? <laughs> golem is like a creature that they could empower. Whether it was a, a written, um, let's call it uh, um, incantation of sorts, or the spoken words. The rabbis could actually, and you think that, that would never be happening in certain cultures. All the major cultures had their way of using the power word to create an extension of themselves. However, is it coming from the God I am or the ego I am not? God created us as an extension. Then all these other people in history of magicians of various types would in their own right create extensions of themselves. But the main extension was not supposed to be creatures and things. It was love. That's all we were supposed to be really extending. And even if it becomes a thought form, I'm going to send you a thought form of love and healing because you're sick. I send it to you a long distance. You wake up having had a dream that I was there sharing a blessing with you and you're healed. That's how it was supposed to look. Then some people started becoming annoying and, <laughs> and thinking, you know, I don't want to send you love. I don't like you. I'm going to send you a curse. And that's where that came from. Where do you think the word curse comes from? Cause. I'm going to curse you. I'm going to cause you to feel bad today because I'm cursing you. And, and we think, well, that, you know, curses, that stuff's not. It all is founded on belief and consciousness, all of which we have, belief and consciousness. But in the third dimensional world, you know, it became so dense, people don't believe in anything but curses and cures also still filter through. A modern day example, it can sound kind of corny, but New England Patriots, the best football team of all time, it, it, only team, they went undefeated longer than anybody, wiping everybody out. They were just perfect. They went to the Super Bowl and they lost to a lesser team. There was no reason they should have lost. But a really weird catch by the other team allowed them to win. A, a catch that was never duplicated since. Or, you know, it was just too bizarre. They played him another couple years later and it happened again. A bizarre catch that shouldn't have happened by the other team. Because there were people cursing the Patriots, not wanting them to win anymore because they were supposedly just too perfect for some. But you think that's maybe just a, an opinion. But then it happened a third time they were pay, uh, playing the Seahawks in the Super Bowl, and it was happening a third time in a row when the Patriots went to the Super Bowl, where the game was done, and with only seconds left, the other team, the Seahawks, they go up, marching up the field, and they're just not going to make it. But one, la you know, seconds before the end, I think it was like 10, 15 seconds left, the guy just throws this bomb in just a few you know, yards from the end zone, this guy, the ball hits his hand, bounces off of everything in the stadium, <laughs> and he's laying on his back and it falls back in his stomach. He picks it up, turns, and tries to go in, and they tackle him, and the Patriots win the Super Bowl. The guy's name was Curse. Spelled different, but it was, his name was Curse. And that, at that moment, that curse was broken. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> It's a true story. <laughs> now you're all like, I'm never watching football again. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's true. Um, and, and Abraxas is an interesting thing because Abraxas is this power. There's, a, there's an uh, MIT computer program, uh, MIT Apple program uh, 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 that they deal with. It's called uh, the, um, the um, Abraxas. And it's referring to programs that are running without you knowing it. Because the, these programs, um, they're related just like, just like our power words. 
They're related to things you don't know that are happening, but they're in the, uh, uh, let me change that. It's not a Braxis, it's daemon. And they use the term a daemon program or demon program. So just like a, a demon or daemon program, these, these, these are MIT Apple people saying, there are programs that are running in your mind that you don't know about. And that's what the daemon is. So Socrates said, I hear a voice of a daemon. Now it's gotten twisted from Greek to mean demon. But it meant a spirit is talking to me. We call that channeling. So Socrates is affirming that he's channeling wisdom that he had. You and I have a daemon too. You, the ultimate guide would be the Holy Spirit. But Abraxas plays a role by some cultures to be one of those voices. Abraxas is like another name for the Christ or the Holy Spirit. It's also another name for you could say uh, um, a god, a, a form of like god consciousness in the material realm. Daemons would be like expressions of Abraxas. So in other words, Abraxas is for everyone. Daemons would be I have one, you have one, you know, so on. Uh, you could say, some people think they're angels or are guiding them, and they are. But in some cultures, they would have called that a daemon. Does that make sense? But again, twisted to mean always demon to some extra you know, uh, narrow-minded people. It's not a, a demon. You might have a demon that's an evolved being, an ascended master. It's my voice. It's my, my um, muse would be called a demon by some people. But the wording gets all kind of twisted around. So these demon programs, they're programs that are running without you knowing about it. And you also have voices of angels and demons also speaking to you without realizing it. That's why one apostle says, this is not a, a, a war of just humans. This is a war of principalities and powers. There are beings. This is a whole unknown. There are more things in heaven and earth than dreamt of in all your philosophies. There are so many layers and dimensions, not only of the universe, but of consciousness. And that which wants to be hateful, fearful, and destructive does nothing but that. That which wants to be loving and healing and supportive wants nothing but that. And humans, more than any other entities, are in the middle, hearing from both of these. And you're told, choose whom you will serve. Another way to say it, choose whom you will believe. The voices of love or the voices of fear. You don't have to name them all. You don't have to identify which angel, which demon, and so on. You don't have to worry about all that. The bottom line is, love and fear and just do your best to align with love but also watch the power of your words speak speak healthy speak true and, and it's not like I have to actually try when I say such and such I can just tell the truth which is e even in my thoughts you can say I'm really struggling all I need to do is focus on it is impossible for you to be less than anyone else on this planet all I have to do is hear that in my mind. That's impossible, even if I don't say that to you. Yeah, I'm really bummed. Everything's, you know, gone wrong for my life. I'm sorry to hear that. Like Ho'oponopono prayer. I'm sorry to hear that. I love you. Thanks for playing that role, and let's let it go now. You see, some form of, sorry to hear that, let's change that. But instead of the... the what prayers had descended into, which is, sorry to hear you have a problem. I'll say a prayer that God might find, you know, make a decision to be merciful to you, poor you, and fix you. Real prayer we're starting to understand is we're all in this together. You're the one that seems to be struggling today. I'm the one who seems to be with feet on solid ground. This just seems to be. Because tomorrow the roles could change. I might need your prayers tomorrow. There's times when I've had, you know, um, fundamental Christians, you know. Oh, you know, you're one of those New Agers. One those, I'm going to pray for you. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> and they're, go, they're like, no, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Excellent. Thank you. I mean, that's great. Every bit helps. <laughs> they just don't know, you know. You know, I, it's like they don't know how to like, get whatever they're trying to get out of me because I'm like, this great, you know. Thank you, I appreciate that. And they're like, no, you're supposed to hate me, you know, for praying for you. No, you know, it's like just 
Just see and affirm everything is okay. There's love, there's light, there's God. And when you're doing it, you're not like, I hope this is true. When you really understand, then you know. There's hoping. There's that kind of faith where you hope something's true. That's not true faith. There's faith that you hope something's true. There's faith that you believe it's true, which is higher. And then there's faith that you no. know. When you know, then you know. And some of us go, yeah, you know, knowing is like faith and believing. No, it's a different level. Humanly speaking, it would be like, it would be like me saying to, you know, a person with clearly, you know, black hair and saying, do you bleach your hair? You know, because you don't look good as a blonde. That person would go, because she knows she's not a blonde. And I'm saying, you know, that black, you know, your blonde hair, it doesn't look good on you. And you're thinking, but I clearly have black hair. You should be at least that confident when you say you know something of God. When people are acting like they treat you like you're blonde, meaning just metaphorically, whether it's your, your race, your religion, your culture, your whatever. When someone's mistreating you, they're trying to tell you you have a different color hair than you actually have. When people are being mean to you and they tell you you're going to hell or you're not evolved, you're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not nearly as good looking as your sister or whatever, they're always wrong. And in Sedona, people don't like that word, wrong. They're wrong too. <laughs> when you're not God, you're wrong. You were mistaken. Now, religion called that your sinning. But sinning doesn't mean worthless, hopeless. It just means a mistake. And you heal it with a chant called oops. <laughs> and that's it. Just chant it, oops. You know, like, let it go. Like, it's okay. Now, you're lying when you say, oops, I made a mistake, and then you continue doing it. Now you're lying to yourself. If you truly meant it when you said, my bad, got it. If you really mean that, you mean, got it, switched it, now I'm on, back on board. The bottom line, guys, is everyone in this universe, not just the world, every being in the universe, every creature is waiting for you and I to slip back, step back into knowing who we are. When I don't know who I am, I take it out on the universe. The whole universe I will make to suffer. I know that doesn't sound very empowering and new thought-ish, but the whole universe is suffering when I have forgotten who I am. How can I prove that? Very easy. The whole universe, even in quantum physics, is understood to be one connected wave. And the wave will say, and so it is, by my thinking. When I think, I'm not valuable, I'm not very lovable, I'm a sinner, I'm flawed, you're flawed, I'm great, you're bad, and so on, a judgment of any kind. The whole universe is like, God dang. And so it is. But it's suffering because that's not what it wants to be doing. It doesn't want to freeze into particles of limitation. It wants to be released into being waves that it is. Waves means, hey, we're just being whole universe is like, ooh, this is so cool. Because that's the closest thing we understand in quantum physics to love. Being. As soon as there's a slipping of the mind out of the knowing of who we are, the universe then will likely now shift into particles that become something solid. And that's not being at all. Now we have a universe of doing. You know, we notice that we, we, we want more of certain plants to grow in an area. So what we'll do is spray death on everything else so that these things can grow. Now you do that and there's some species of bug that's like, you know, we don't dig this. And that bug ate some other bug before. And now that other bug isn't eaten so it comes and wipes out your crops. Now you've got to spray it with something else to kill what you sprayed to kill before. That's called the world of doing. The whole kingdom of doing constantly trying to react and fight and fix. What are we fixing? Not just chemicals. We're trying to fix our miscreations of our thoughts. When we get back to love, we stop doing. And if we stop doing, we stop ruining. Because if I'm in who I really am, believe it or not, 
this being that stands, any one of us, the being that stands and says, I, I choose to remember, the whole universe comes to honor that voice as well. And so it is. And A Course in Miracles has these lovely poetic ways of describing it, just as it describes Buddha's life in his moment of saying, I got it. It says, trees will bow over your head to keep the sun off of you. You could be standing out in a hot space, and all of a sudden, somehow, water will percolate up from the ground and come and cool your feet. That's how the Garden of Eden was and is. It's just not seen anymore because people shifted into the world of doing. In the Garden of Eden, you had everything you could possibly imagine, all needs met, and you didn't have to kill anything to eat. All needs were met. But as soon as you killed your brother, every, or, or as soon as one being, you know, false temptation, pray to eat the apple, it's not an apple. You know, that's like, it's not an apple. It's a concept. We bit from the tree of illusion meaning the illusion of who we are. We went from the tree of knowing, the tree of knowledge, who we are, and instead we ate from the tree of good and evil, my opinions of who I am. You see the difference? When I ate from that tree, I fell from grace, and now I shift into the world of doing. Out comes the children, and one kills the other. Terrible. And it just continues. Pretty soon, there's you know one of them's marked for life, Forever you will struggle in this way and that way. Adam and you're going to struggle. Eve, you're going to struggle. Because everybody fell from being into doing. And when we do that, our actions of murder, the one brother murders another, and it's the same thing we do verbally. When you gossip, you're murdering people verbally. Even when you talk low about yourself. And I don't mean to, you know, if you say to me, like you're doing some work and you say, God, I don't know if I'm ever going to get this. I'm not going to be like, oh, don't speak such negatives from the ego I am not. Or la, 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 you know, trying to like prevent yourself from hearing such. It, it's okay. You know, one way you can help them is not by cursing them for speaking that way. You can also just change it by making it light. Laughing, yeah, I know, that's kind of hard sometimes, isn't it? Well, and maybe you make a suggestion on how to make it easier. Or you give them an example of, yeah, you know, I was struggling with how to do something once, and here's what I did. You give them examples, and that sometimes is how a person can shift back to knowing, rather than just corrective or shaming. Does that make sense? So we have to remember, the, the, the ego has created a buffer so that we're not aware that every time you ever have thought or spoken, and you can't speak it without thinking it, you can't think it without believing it. It's all really rooted in our misbeliefs. But every time you think or say or believe something and in a way that's off, it would be great if instantly something would happen. Man, I just sometimes, I'm so mad at myself. Ow! Okay, got it. <laughs> that would be great. But that's not the way it's designed, the whole ego system. It buffers it. It says, three lifetimes from now, and this one next week, and this one, so that you can never connect the dots and recognize only you are affecting your life for good or ill. I should say, it's you and it's us, because we also can help or, and support, or we can also continue the problem. Any of us, any one or more of us, can help bring a change to somebody's consciousness. However, keep this in mind, there's a buffer. That's why some cultures, there's an you know, Arab concept um, you know, that, that says, you know, you've you know, you got to watch because you they believe that there's like a recording angel, like your Akashic record angel, but they believe in some cultures that it takes several days before it records your deeds. Why? So you have time to negate it before it gets locked in. Locked in doesn't mean fate from God, but it's the way we set things up. So we set it up to where cause has an effect. You reap what you sow. The word karma you think of as having a negative connotation. The word, Sanskrit words, karma means cause and effect, both. It's a complete word. So karma doesn't mean, oh, you got negative karma, because there's good karma, because it's, not, it's neutral. It's that every cause has an effect. 
Simple as that. So every thought will have an effect. I, I, I have to recognize that even my words and my thoughts are actually known in some places as prayers. Even when you say, man, I hate that person, it's a prayer. It's actually a prayer. And I'm always praying. One is spelled P-R-A-Y and one is P-R-E-Y. <laughs> you know? But I'm always praying. And you look in the mirror and you know, oh, I'm not cute enough or I'm not this enough or that enough. Affirmation, affirmation, affirmation. Now you're just going to age quicker because you're worried about how you look. <laughs> I got all these stress lines. I don't know where they came from. Maybe 50 years of I'm not pretty enough. Stop stressing. You don't have a body. It's an illusion. And when you realize that and you let go of that notion, you start having the opportunity to own I am not a body, I am free. I am as angelic as anyone. And if I want to know how angelic I am, I'm not going to want to you know, compare myself to, say, Hitler. What I want to do at first is compare myself to someone I love and respect and imagine. I have a child, it's five years old. If it, God forbid, were to die or something, would I want to picture that it's broken in some way on the other side. No, I would picture, oh, she would be so beautiful, she'd be so lovely, and so are you. Use an image like that to even remotely understand how beautiful you are. One day, you'll also be able to say the same thing about even the most horrendously behaving person. Underneath that hurtful, rude behavior, why do you think anybody acts like a Hitler? Because more than you or me, they forgot who they are, and they're miserable. That's how it is. The lion that constantly roars and scares everybody. It takes one courageous person to go over and pull the thorn out of its paw and then it's like friends forever. People are, are annoying. Absolutely. The good news is it's not the God in them that's annoying. Bad news is they're still annoying. <laughs> so what are we going to do about that? All I know is that I absolutely have it within me to evoke that other part that's not visible right now. What if it doesn't work? It will not always work the way you and your senses, your eyes and ears want it to happen. It will not. But remember, there's a buffer. Not only is there a buffer that things I do and karmically come back, you know, and I can't see the negatives all the time, it's true with positives. Do you think the ego wants you to see that as soon as you have a lovely thought, you start to feel immune to all things? No, it doesn't want you to put that together because you'll do it more often. It keeps everything disconnected, separated, dissociated so that you have disempowered people. So what are we going to do? Let's start making everything happen right when it should so that we'll see it. You can't. Not in a world that is an illusion based upon time and space. The world took everything that is now and blew it into then. <laughs> It's always some other, it, it disconnected it all. When we thought we could be separate, it all happened like that. So you're not going to be able to fix it by forcing it back together. It can't. What you can do is, despite the way things look, I affirm the truth. What we're really feeling is, and I wish I could feel a little more truth. You know, that's how you really feel. And I'd really like some of that right now. You know, I affirm that, that the universe is abundant and that I am abundant and because God is abundant, I too am abundant and all of my bills can be paid and I feel great and I have enough to share and tithe and give. Great. That's the truth. But there's a part of us that's like, oh man, if only. You know, that, that slips back into that fear and doubt. Don't pretend that's not there. Instead, start with that. Wow, isn't it amazing? <laughs> that I still feel like I struggle with this uh, health issue or money issues or what, because the truth is, bam, and go to town on that. Go ahead and bring your doubts to the altar. If you try to pretend they're not there because they're not spiritual to speak those or think those, you know, and you stuff them and go, no, everything's just peachy here. <laughs> you know, it's not real. And it will undermine your altar. You stuff those things under the altar, they will start to, like a rust, 
dissolve and eat the surface of your altar and everything you tried to put on it that was nice and loving, little flowers representing your goddess self and whatever, the, the holes from the rust in the altar are just going to open up and all that stuff will drop away. And you'll think, after all the work I've been doing spiritually, why isn't it happening? Because you built your house on quicksand. Get used to knowing the truth of God then believing the truth of God, then feeling the truth of God, then speaking as well, speaking and acting the truth of God. Through and through. Don't be all broken and pretend to just affirm truth because you know part of you that won't believe it at all. It's, you know, to be in physical pain and go, no, really, everything's just great. You know, there's my affirmation of peace. It, you know, you're in pain. You're distracted. Let's own that. But learn to say, isn't this funny? that despite the fact that I don't even have a body and therefore cannot feel pain, and I cannot age, and I cannot be sick. That's a fact. So isn't it kind of funny that I still am playing the game? Isn't this kind of funny? This is my ego's way of saying, you're not going today. No ascension for you today. You know, that's just the ego trying to, you know, trying to shame me. Be able to see it, the truth. That's what's happening. And be able to laugh at it. But come back to... Yet the truth is, because now you're showing you're a master. You're not in denial. You're not pretending. You're showing up and you're saying, I get that I'm in pain. But despite the pain, boom, here we go. And you bring in the truth of God. Is that cool? Please take a few centering breaths. The power of thought, beliefs, knowing, the power of words, Abba, Father, Mother, God, Holy Spirit, Abracadabra, the power of words, and so it is, Amen, and so on and so on. The power of words, but... The most powerful, we may not want to or believe or like to hear this, but the most powerful word now, out of all of them, is Christ. Because when you and I use the name, the word Christ, we're returning to our divinity and you cannot affirm anything from a higher place than your divinity and our divinity. And the name Jesus Christ, of course, in miracles says, is the most powerful name in the universe. Why? Simply because it's not just magic or a religion we're talking. We're talking because that's a person who first completely remembered his true identity. He's a symbol of us awakening. <clears throat> Gradually slipping into a place of quiet and peace. the core of our being inside. When you say Christ, you are actually saying the I am of God. When you say Holy Spirit, it's the I am of God. So just choose one, the father, the mother, or the Christ, which is the child of God which you are part of. But use something that, that's symbolizing the presence of God. Don't settle on lesser beings. Don't call in the, the power of your deceased aunts and uncles. Call in the presence of God in its most sublime form, powerful form. Know that it's created everything and can help us uncreate illusions and then re-manifest the truth of God. Even Jesus, he's messing with you when he says things and you don't realize what he's saying. When they say, are you the son of God? He says, I am. Why did he say I am? Because he's bringing in the powerful presence of God in that moment. Another thing he calls himself, the Lamb of God. Check this out. Just think, feel this inside. I am the Lamb of God, taking away the sins of the world. What does Lamb mean? Just 
break the L into an I. When he said, I am the Lamb, he's saying, I am the I am. The Lamb, I am. It's a secret, a way to slip in through symbols that people understood. The lambs would be slaughtered so that people could be pure and cleared of mistakes and sins. But it's not really the lamb and it's not really sacrifice of animals. It's not a lamb, it's an I am. So in this moment, become vividly aware of you, your life, your daily stuff, limitations, an ache in a joint, a pain in the head, a frustration in your checkbook, a job you struggle with. Be honest and open with it all. Here's the life I seem to have. And just bring it all. Don't leave anything, no stone unturned. Put everything on there. Gray hair, aging, wrinkles, frustrations, sibling rivalry, everything of life. A car doesn't get enough mileage. War, politics. And instead of just the things that most irritate you, what you should put on the altar, anything that is not perfect, pure light and love. The slightest inhibitions of pure light. Put everything before you on the altar figuratively. This is the life I seem to have. I have, and hear the words, I have this and this, I have a headache. I, so go ahead and in your mind quietly say it. It's not going to hurt you right now. Just, or you can also add, and I'm struggling with. Go ahead and talk about struggles. Get yourself identified with them for a moment. These are expressions of your current life. And then hear these words like they come from your own soul. This is how my life looks. This is how my life seems. But if it's not the life that God has created for me, one of perfect light and love, then it can't actually be real and it can't actually have any power over me. So I'm actually living, and I've been living, technically, a make-believe world, a make-believe life. It's impossible for me to have a job I don't like. I'm not saying I don't have it, it's just that I'm noticing a contrast. There is an anomaly of some kind. It's impossible for me to fall out of love or into a false love. It's impossible for a holy child of God to ever have been betrayed or abused or neglected. I'm not saying it didn't seem to happen. I'm saying something's wrong with this picture. God is only love, peace, joy, and abundance. My life has not been that all the time, which means my life has not always been a God life, a good life. And if it wasn't an expression of God, then... How could it have ever been? It wasn't. But at the very least, it has no power. So I see myself just waving my hand to my life, just waving it across the universe, across the world. Abracadabra. Be gone. Be still and know the I am presence of God. Stop. Be gone. And imagine it all just turns to sparkles and drops to the, to the floor, to the ground, just away. That world created by that which I am not, the ego I am not, has bowed into nothingness now. 
simply by its creator being me, by its creator being honest enough, responsible enough, and humble enough to say, oops, what was I thinking? I didn't need to have any of that stuff. I no such thing. Come on, karma, debt, flaw, it's impossible. Be gone. But now my world is empty, and that causes fear for some. I don't want to have nothing. I'd rather have my old patterns and limitations back than to have nothing. No, no, no. Hang in with the nothing for a moment. It's called peace. See it not as emptiness and loneliness. See it as stillness. Be still and know I am God. It's not the stillness purely that's God. It's on the other side of the stillness. So by being courageous enough to release the old and endure the quiet moment in between the old and the new, there has to be that courage. We drop into that space. Forgive us ourselves. We choose to forgive ourselves for all limiting beliefs. Why would we ever even try to imagine that we were lesser than God created us to be? And then why would we even bother taking it out on each other and projecting our lacks and limitations onto each other? Release the politicians for symbolizing your power. They have none. Release religious figures and stop blaming them for ruining people with excessive superstitions, guilts, and shames. They only had power people thought they needed to give them. Release people that seem to abuse or neglect you. Let them be rendered powerless. You don't have to totally get it. Just a foot in the door is enough. And now we can say, I am prepared for you, Father, Mother, God. I am an embodiment of the divine feminine, prepared to be impregnated, so to speak, with the presence of God. Come back to me now and rise inside of me, Father, Mother, God. Rise in me so viscerally, so thoroughly, when everybody sees me, they see God. Not in a boasting, egotistical sense, in a gentle, loving, peaceful, forgiving sense. Help me to be your presence on a day-to-day -day basis. Help me to be the one that extends a prayer to everyone I see struggling, not just the ones I think deserve my prayers. Everyone, equally, to send love to people I find attractive and unattractive. Nice and not so nice. To be the presence of love. And then I choose to have this so viscerally in me, my words start to become more and more words of clarity. It doesn't mean I have to stand on a hilltop and say, I am, and shout. It's more of an expression, even more often than not, gently. Hey, look, this is the way it is. Or speaking to ourselves. When we hear voices of doubt, to be able to say, hold it. Be still, ego. So I may know the presence of God right here and now. Manifesting this presence for all people. Then I can say with absolute certainty, which I begin saying now. When you see me, you see the Father. Something Jesus said. I am an expression of the Divine Mother. I choose to be this. I walk in the light of God. The light of God is also known as the Christ. So I walk in the light of Christ. Nothing to do with a religion, Christianity per se. It's the consciousness now, not the religion. There is Christ to my right, Christ to my left, Christ before me, Christ behind me. Christ above, Christ below, Christ within, Christ all around. I see and affirm Christ in me and Christ in all people I ever see. I choose to see the Christ in the eyes of others, thus evoking it in the eyes of myself. I affirm Christ in the mouth, spoken words of others, and in my own. Christ in my ears, Christ in my hands, my feet, 
my actions, my thoughts, my feelings. Christ in my knowingness, Christ in my studies, Christ in my parenting, Christ at work, Christ as I drive a car, Christ when I receive a ticket, Christ when I'm healthy, Christ when I'm sick. Nothing matters other than I am as God created me. And everything that doesn't feel like that is merely a test slash temptation to believe otherwise. That's all it is. And I refuse to succumb to that. And when I do, oops, and I bounce back. That's my spiritual path. I am as God created to me, me to be. When I slip, oops, and I bounce back. I am as God created me to be, but so are you. If I can't see that you are as Christ, God created you to be, then I'm instantly cursing myself. Because as I judge others, I am judged. So I affirm also, God created everyone in its image. And you remain as God created you to be. Even if your behaviors don't catch up to that reality yet. I affirm to the worst of human beings, your day shall come. Not I hope, I absolutely know it. It's impossible for anyone to not make it back into the remembrance. Remembering means to take the members that were separated and remember them, rejoin them. How can we be one in God with a few of us missing? Everyone home. I affirm here and now, this is not a hope to be, a one day it might happen. This is an absolute. I'm affirming the truth of what is from the beginning, is in the end, and ever shall be. The only time I've missed that is when I've allowed myself to forget. Fear and hate is forgetting. Love is forgiving. And in this moment, I affirm the presence of love and forgiving which then allows a remembering of all beings home in God as God and so it is <laughs> cool, huh? all right let's Stretch out a little bit. Take your time. Kind of let that integrate into your body, mind, and soul. How's it feel? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's next to impossible to know the truth of God and then kind of remain stuck in the same old feelings we always feel. You know, and that's a good thing. You know, I, I want to wake up. I want to be alive. I want to, want to remember. And that's a good thing.